the world will know. When you allow God to take out your Goliaths, when you allow Him to work through you and you take out the enemy, the world will know that there is a God that is alive through you. You know, when you see somebody on fire for Jesus, something happens in you. You go, I need that. I need to get closer to God. I, I can do that. If He can do it, I can do it. And it starts to spark something inside of you and I. Instead of sin continually shouting its defiance against you, and telling you that you can't. It's time for us to realize you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You can realize that you got victory. And I got victory in situations. There is no sin too big that God cannot bust it. There's no stronghold too strong that God cannot take it out. Well, Pastor, I, I, I struggled in this one area for 50 years. And I struggle every day with it. God can still take that out. No matter how big a giant is, how bigger it is, the harder it falls. Boom! It's coming out. You got to realize that. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about David and Goliath today. I'm going to talk about how a shepherd boy was not going to just let Israel and the king and everybody around just shake in terror because of a giant who would come out and he would just say, that come on, is there anybody that will take me on? Is there anybody out there? And everybody was shaken with fear, except this shepherd boy. He said, who? Who does he think he is that he could stand against the living God? How, how, how does he think he could do that? I, I serve a God that, that helped me take out the bear. And help me take out the lion. And in fact, I took him with my hands and I, and I ripped him apart. I took out the enemies around me. That's just, that's just a human being of flesh. It might be a big one. It might be huge. It might be eight, nine feet tall. Who knows how big Goliath was totally was. He was a big boy. But... David goes, I see God. I see God. I know my God is able. You see, there's got to be something inside of you today that gets strong because, you know, your obedience taking out your Goliaths. You're going against your Goliaths. Whatever that is today. Whatever giant is in your life that's been hard for you to handle. Whatever situation that you've been personally dealing with, this just seems so hard. You've asked God before and it didn't seem like He was there. And God is saying, I'm with you. And as you step out and, and you charge the enemy line and you start going up against your Goliath, what's going to happen is your little slingshot, your little rock going around and around and around and around and around and around and around. One little prayer went up to God and the giant came tumbling down and cut his head off. <laughs> Come on, that's a song. I didn't just make it up. <laughs> I didn't just make that one up. Now, that's a cute one that sing with kids. But it has a lot of truth. The Holy Ghost missile. 
the Holy Ghost missile. Your obedience. Say, God, I'm tired. I'm tired of the same old stuff that I've been dealing with and the defiance of the giant that keeps speaking at me and telling me that I can't do it and I can't win. I'm tired of that. Your obedience is stepping out, taking that whew, that skill that you have learned, activated the presence of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost missile whew, is going right at the head of the giant in your life. And it's going to stick in his head and down he's going to go. I'm not making up this story. I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to show you the, the truth of God's word and what it says. There's a song that says, The world will know the tomb is empty when they see our hearts are full. They will know that he's living when he lives in me and you. You see, the world will know what holds tomorrow when I'm holding him today. The world will know. You see, I'm going to read out of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45 and 46. It says, David said to the Philistine, You come at me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. And the world... Come on now, this is what the title of this message today. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. The whole world will know. You see, when people see that I'm not the same person that I used to be. I'm not the same person. In fact, I continually am growing in my relationship with God. And I'm changing. God's changing me. And He's changing you. And the world sees there's something different about you there's something different it's because you're taking on your giants you're taking on your giants whatever those giants may be and you're going at it with the power of the presence of God in your life and people are going to go the world will know there's a God there really is a God who's alive that Jesus did rise from the dead. And He did conquer death. And He covered my sin and your sin upon the tree on Calvary. And the world will know. That's what I just pray resonates inside of you today. Because the world is waiting. Waiting for you. Who else is going to step up? Who else is going to show that God's alive? Who else is going to make a difference? It might as well be you. Might as well be me. It says, uh, come on. As for me and my house, we're serving the Lord. Having that tenacity inside of you that you're not going to quit. You're going to stay strong. Is there any amens in the house today? Come on now. God's with you. Well, Bryce, this is a pretty good message, but you're getting kind of graphic. You're talking about heads cutting off, and you're talking about... But this is a, a parallel to a lot of things in your life that need to be cut off. Things that just need to be... Come on. You need to be taken out. God's power will do that on your behalf. But God's waiting for you. Because he's got the power to do it. He's waiting for you to charge the enemy line. 
David didn't crawl up to the enemy line. He didn't run the other way. He ran to the enemy line. He ran up to the giant. David was, he had armor put on him. The people were trying to say, well, if you're going to, this little shepherd boy, if he's going to go against this massive giant who's got all this armor on, we better put armor on him too. So they put armor on him and it didn't fit because it wasn't the anointing for his life. Anointing is God's supernatural power for him. So he, I he goes, I can't do it. Give me my little slingshot and a rock. That's it. And he went running up to the, to the enemy line. And the giant laughed. What? You think I'm a dog? You think I'm a dog? You come up with a little stick. But who got the last laugh? Out of this one. It says in First uh, Samuel seventeen forty eight through 51. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and, and struck the Philistine on the forehead... The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him and took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from this, the scabbard after he killed him, he cut off his head at, with a sword. When the Philistines saw that their hero, this massive giant, was dead, they turned and ran. They turned and ran. You see, when you're taking out your Goliaths, you're taking them out, his little buddies that's been messing with you are going to run as well. Going to take off and run. You see, you stand up in obedience to God and watch your enemy flee. Amen. May God arise his and His enemies be scattered. Amen. May God arise and His enemies be scattered. Amen. I'm getting something out of this message today. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Get something out of this. I just pray that it gets you in your spiritual bone marrow today. That you go, yes. Bring it on. I need this. I need this for my eye. I need to get that fire back. I need to get that boldness back. I need to get that spark back inside of me. Instead of feeling like I want to quit. Instead of feeling like you want to quit. It's like, no, I got a new resolve inside of me. I got a new determination. My best days are still ahead. Amen. God's got great things in store for my life and your life. And stepping forward in that. It's time to quit listening to the voices that tell you that you can't do it. Tell you that you can't. Listen to the voice of truth. What's the voice of truth saying? What does God say? See, He's telling me a different story. He's telling me a different story than, than what my emotions are telling me and what other people are telling me. God is telling me something different. You can surely do it. You can succeed. You got this. You're not all alone. God says, I'm with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm with you to the finish. What a loving God that we have. He loves you so much. He loves you. He dearly loves you. Thank God for His love. A lot of people are waiting on you to step up. 
There's a lot of stories in the Bible about stepping, stepping up and stepping out. One is like Peter. He's in a boat in a storm. Jesus is walking on the water. And, and Jesus said, come. If it's you, Lord, then let me, let me step out and come. Come. Jesus said, come. He steps out of the boat and he starts to fix his eyes on Jesus and starts to walk toward Christ. We know the story. He got his eyes off of God and he started to sink. But if he kept his focus on God, he walked all the way on water, uh, a mere human being. He could have walked on water all the way to Jesus. You see, there's a lot of scenarios. You see, what's the voice of truth saying? Come. Gideon was a guy. I can't, I can't fight against, against all these enemies, the Midianites. There's too many of them. They're big. They're strong. They're mighty warriors. I, I can't do this. And, and, and the angel of the Lord spoke to Gideon. And he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. See, the voice of truth was saying, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And God would say to you today, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Can you, can you say out loud, I'm a mighty warrior? Come on, because you are. You're a mighty warrior for God. Yeah. You see, it's, it's getting that truth back into us. And there was a thousand, a thousand people, a thousand warriors shaking in their armor. Israelite people. They were shaking in their armor. The giant would come out every day, every day, come out and say, come on, somebody step out of here. Who's going to do it? A thousand warriors were shaking in their armor. And it's time for us to go, no. With God, I'm a mighty warrior. My God's with me. He's got this with me. Amen about that, everybody? You see, I remember some stories that I'll share one more uh, illustration then share, share a couple little stories that I personally have gone through where God had to step out. Um, one that I'm going to say about mountains is God says, the voice of truth says, speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain, and the mountain will move. The mountain will move. The, the, the fear would say, mountains don't move. Mountains stay in the same place. See, there's some obstacles in your life today, in my life. There's some obstacles out there that are like a mountain. And you have to speak the voice of truth. And the voice of truth is saying, speak to that mountain and it will be cast into the depth of the sea. It, it will be leveled. That mountain will be leveled. It's like taking a mountain to a molehill and leveling it out. The power of the presence of God. Whatever mountain is in your life today, Speak the voice of truth and watch the mountain move. I declare that you have a mountain moving God that lives inside of you if you've called on his name. If you call on the name of Jesus and you have the living God Almighty inside of you and he's a mountain moving God on your behalf and God wants to just be strong through you today. I remember out doing some fishing with, with a friend. And uh, the, the guy was, we were fishing around a kelp bed. And so it's kind of a shallow area where there's some kelp. I mean, everybody knows what kelp is, right? Yeah. So he was, uh, we were just fishing around there. And then the guy got a little gung-ho. He says, there's no fish here. Let's go find another spot. Vlamba! Starts the motor up. And... Instead of going around the kelp, he goes right through the kelp bed. 
And I go, no, 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 go around. No, I got this. <laughs> he goes right through the kelp. <laughs> the motor quits, gets hot. So we're messing around with it. And he's like, we're going to have to, before the, the tide shifts and moves us out, we're going to have to roll really fast to the edge of this one hill, this kind of a big rock, and you're going to have to get out, Bryce, and you're going to have to, like, like I've got a rope, and you're going to walk your way across slippery, slimy rocks for three miles, and we'll work our boat all the way to Bowman's Bay, and then we'll get out. So... I'm going to just sit there. So I did it, and it was so slippery I fell, and I got kelp, or not kelp, uh, what do you call that? Barnacles. I got barnacles stuck in my hand. I actually still have, if I look closely, there's a little spot on my hand that looks like it's a little bit darker because it's underneath a lot now because it was a lot of years ago. But it kind of shows that what had happened. But I wasn't going to just let a situation stop me. And we worked our way. It took hours to get our way back in. See, there's things in your life you, you can't quit. You got to just keep going. You, you got to be bold in this. I remember my dad go bear hunting. And he, one day he was with my cousin across the road from where I live, and he was out bear hunting and shot a, shot a bear. But it got dark, and, he, and the bear kept running. And so they didn't have a flashlight, so they went back to the house. And my dad, I remember my dad came in and goes, uh, I'm getting a flashlight. I'm going back out, and I'm going to get a bear. And I go, Dad, I go, do you realize that wounded bears are not very friendly? You know, you probably don't want to do this. And he's like, no. He goes, I'm getting that bear. And so he went back out with a flashlight. Hours later, came back with that bear and brought it back. You know, there's things that want to stop you. And, and even people's voices that want to say, no, no, you can't do something. You've got to just say, with God, we're going to do this. And step out with boldness to do it. 1 John 5.5 5, Who is he that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Now, I want to take that word believe and break it down a little bit so we have a good understanding. Because the word believe is used differently in different ways throughout the Bible. If, you know, it says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And you go, wow. Well, anybody can say, oh, I believe there's God. I guess I'm, I guess I'm saved. I guess I'm going to heaven. That's not what God's talking about there. The belief that he's talking about is a deeper belief. It's deeper than just saying that you believe that, that there is a God. It's putting your life, faith, trust in. Breaking down in the Greek, that word in the Greek is called pieto, carries a connotation of deep trust and confidence. Deep trust and confidence. If you believe that if you stand on a railroad track, and a train starts to come, and if you believe that if you step off that track, you will live, then you better step off that track because you're going to show action to it if you really believe. You can't stand on the railroad track and say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, and get pasted by a train. If you believe, then you're going to have action to what you're doing. 
So the word believe is an action word. And it's a deep trust and it's a confidence. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Then if I believe it, then I mean, I'm putting my life trust in Him as my Lord and Savior. And I'm having Him come in my heart. Now the other word believe, in James 2.19, it says, you believe there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe in shudder. Even the demons believe in shudder. Do you think the demons are going to go to heaven? No. Well, see, it's a different belief here. You know, just saying you believe. So the demons believe and shake. We're talking about a wimpy belief. It's like a poodle shaking in the summertime like he's cold. And that's what demons, they, they shudder, they shake with fear. They believe, they believe, they, they know that God is real. They believe that, but are they putting their faith, life, trust in Him? No, they're not. So the belief that God is wanting for us has action to it. You're not going to shake like a leaf. You're going to step out and believe with some action to it. Are you with me today? Amen. Are you with me today on this? Right. Being a champion... You see yourself as one. Come on. You got to see yourself as one. Tap into the Hercules within. His name is Jesus. Come on. That's what God wants us to do. Tap into the Hercules power of His presence for your life. Not the wimpy, wimple, still skin believe. I believe there's a God. No, it's like, I believe and you're stepping out with life trust in. Come on now. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Do you not know that in a race that all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way to get the prize. God has called you and I to run the race. The only one that's going to win. Amen. Run that race to the finish. Amen. God has called you and I to run that race to the finish. It says in Proverbs 23, verse 7, the first part of the verse, For as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. You've got to start thinking the right way. Start believing in the right way. Hebrews 12, 2, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Come on. Yeah. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yeah. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It says in Psalm 27, verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, and whom shall I be afraid? All the armies of Israel were paralyzed by fear. Paralyzed by fear. They had paralysis that would set in. They didn't want to move in obedience. And God hasn't called you to have paralysis in your walk with Him, but to have power. Power to move forward. Charge the enemy line. With God, we can certainly do this. And a little shepherd boy took down a giant. Took down a giant. The, the reward for him was he wouldn't have to, his whole family would not have to pay taxes for the rest of their life. He would also get, get a, a wife out of the equation, a beautiful lady, and one other thing. I'm trying to remember the last one. There was three. There was three things that that would happen for David. But that's what we need to realize. There's rewards in our life by stepping out in obedience. His his blessing of showing that the world will know. The world will know. It's time for us to reach many people. 
our life. And it comes, it comes by us stepping out and having the spirit of David and being like that shepherd boy. Use your skill. Take your time. Just keep, keep loving God. Keep loving Him. Just keep being obedient. And then when the big challenges come your way, you'll be able to step up and say, with God, I can certainly do this. And step out and watch God shine through you. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? He charged a monster of a man and he overcame him. Shake off paralysis and charge. Shake off paralysis and charge. Who's with me today? Charge in obedience of God's blessing. Amen. Amen. I just want you to get that whole thing in your spirit today. Why, why waste our time and not be an impact to other people? It's time for us to be an impact and bless people. And it comes by the blessing that comes in our life for us stepping out and watching God do the miraculous and the change that happens in you and me. The change. I'm a different person. And I'm continually growing. And I'm going to continue and continue and continue to grow. Are you going to let God do that in you today? Are you going to let Him give, give God permission? Well, I just don't understand all this. I don't know all this. Take one step toward God and watch Him show Himself strong on your behalf. God, I pray right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for your blessing on every person. And I pray, Lord God, that we would step out and watch the giant, the Goliath, go down in our There's no sin too big. There's no sin too strong. With God, you've got this. And God is going to help you win. No matter how long you've struggled with things in your life, with God, you can overcome. The Bible says you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. We overcome in Jesus' name. God, I just thank you for your love and blessing on every person in this house. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, can you give God some praise today? Come on now. Come on, isn't God good? Come on. The world will know because you are a life-changing history maker in Jesus' name. God bless you.